This is part two. Welcome back. It's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher. And in part one of carburizing, case hardening, I did several samples. I talked a lot about the uh, metallurgy and, and so on in the background of carburizing. And I talked about caseinite and other compounds. So in this part of the video, which I hope will be a little shorter, I'm going to surface harden, case harden these swivel jaws. So let's begin. And the furnace is already heated up, which takes almost two hours. All right, we're into part two, of course, and I'm going to put the actual jaw, one of the jaws. I won't show both of them because it'll be exactly the same. It's easier for me when I'm videoing to just do one of them. So I'll put it in there to soak. And I'm watching the clock. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, one jaw is in the furnace right now. And when I bring it out in a few minutes red hot, I'm going to put it in the tray like this. And then I'm going to sprinkle more of the compound caseinite over it. And then put the whole thing into the furnace for, again, one half hour. Then take it out and quench it. Remember that this process can be repeated two or three or four times to get the case thicker or deeper into the part. Okay, the part is 1650 degrees hot. Here it comes. And now back into the furnace. Boy, what an inferno. Hot, hot, hot. 30 minutes. See you then. Remember, the chamber of this furnace is only large enough to put on a set of false teeth made out of gold. It's been over a half hour and you can almost hear the carbon being absorbed, can't you? Let's take it out. And there it is, looking pretty good. I'll clean it up real well. Now, the nice thing about carburizing is you do not have to worry about your work cracking. And there's always the possibility when you're heat treating, especially if you don't know what you're doing with tool steel, of developing a crack, especially around a hole or a slot or something like that. So let me wire brush this here real quickly and we'll have a look. Looks really good. I'm very pleased with that. And it's harder than a rock. It just glazes over as if I was filing a bottle. Glass bottle, not plastic. Now I'm going to oil that real lightly.
But but isn't that nice? I think I failed to tell you that you cannot case harden any kind of cutting tool where you're going to sharpen it and uh, grind it. Uh, of course, you remove the case. So it's for non-cutting tools. Let's take a break. It's time for a little levity. I thought maybe I could make my own carburizing compound, so I decided to look into the ever-popular Henley's formulas for the home and workshop. Now this is such an outrageous book. I'm sure you have a copy of it. They printed five million of them. And this was printed in uh, originally 1907 and then it was revised as recently as 1927. But it, it's just so outrageous because everything in this book requires materials you you never heard of, and you certainly couldn't find, such as tincture of mercury, green vitriol, can you get that at Kmart? Sulfuric of sodium, sulfuret of sodium, rather, and bismuth subnitrite. Come on. It's outrageous. But anyway, I looked in the index for case hardening. I'll show you what I found. So I'm in the index and I found case hardening as you can see here and it said go to page 648. Well I went to page 648 and there's nothing there. So this is page 648 and it tells you how to make perfumed soap. I prefer dial anyway. Now after wasting a half hour of my time searching through this rather thick book here's what I came up with. So finally I found it on page 684 instead of 648. They had transposed the number, but you know, they would have been setting type by hand back then. But they talk about carburizing, case hardening locally. Well, I read this and what that amounted to was, that is you could case harden right in here, but not over here if you wanted. So it's telling you how to mask it off. That was useless. Well I studied a little more. There was a reference here and I found on page 427 and there is a section here on how to make a powder for hardening iron and steel. Notice they still use the word harden. But of course they're telling you to get some potassium cyanide and chromate and all kinds of other ridiculous things that you couldn't get. So that's the old method found in Henley's. I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Now I wasted some of your time because I wasted almost an hour doing this research. <laughs> Two things I forgot to tell you. One is that for your small parts, if you're going to case harden with a torch, a butane propane type or MAP torch is sufficient. And the other thing I wanted to tell you, if you are annealing something, heat the furnace up like this, and I've turned the furnace off because I'm done with it for today. Close the door, and it's a long time before the red is gone, and like almost overnight until it's totally cool to the touch. So it's just perfect for annealing and cooling that uh, part down very, very slowly, which is what you need to do with annealing if you want to soften the steel. These jaws really do look good if I dare say so. I've got them cleaned up with a wire brush. I'll go ahead and oil them and rub it around real well like I would do if I was oiling a fine firearm. I very much hope that you watch the earlier four parts of making these swivel jaws. Now I've oiled these and doesn't that look nice? Harder than a rock of course. This is the pair that has not been carburized yet. You can see the difference in color. This was a very high interest area for high school students. They loved hot metal, molten metal, fire, explosions, anything along that line, you know, and you had their attention. 
and it wasn't easy to get their attention. What do you think? Now take a look at how much I have left. And at the age of 77, that's a lifetime supply. You might find this interesting. This is a page out of the 1998 Retco Alloy Company catalog. I used to buy a lot of products from them, and that was the last year of my teaching before I retired. But notice that even back then, over 20 years, 22 years ago, that it was $11 for a one pound can and $38.85 for the five pound can and they sold it in a ten pound can and go ahead and read this I'll put a still picture at the end I am fully aware of how long this two-part video was hope you enjoyed it tell your friends about it come back and look at it often give me a thumbs up if I deserve it and uh, let me know in the comments you'll, if you'd be interested in more videos on heat treating and things of that nature. Be sure and watch all of my other videos. There are well over 1,200 of them, plus all of my video courses. So thanks, and I'll see you in my next video. This is Tubal Cain. So long for now. Time to clean up. Put your tools away.